So what if I told you that Google is actually planning to be aggressive about the Pixel 5? We have some leaked prices for the Google Pixel 5 and they don't seem too bad actually. Speaking of leaked price tags, the OnePlus 8T just got the same treatment and we're kind of uncertain on this one. And AT&T doesn't seem to be too hyped about the iPhone 12 according to a new statement. I'm Jaime Rivera, and I think that the only thing that people are really hyped about right now is not as much as phone as it is to go back to normal life. This is Pocket Down Daily. The official news today begin with deals, and they actually start with a product that's discontinued and still continues to be hot. Since we're talking pixels today, the Google Pixel 4 is currently $300 off on Amazon. That leaves the entry-level variant at $500 shipped. The Pixel 4 XL is $118 off, leaving it at $781 shipped for the entry-level variant. If you want a brand new Apple Watch, the Series 6 is currently $15 off. And hey, we know it's not a huge deal, but it's a new watch so it is a big deal kind of. This leaves the 40 millimeter GPS variant for 385 bucks shipped. And finally, if you want an affordable Android tablet, what, nobody? All right, fine. The Galaxy Tab A10.1 is currently $50 off. That leaves a 32 gig of storage variant for 180 bucks still 32 gigs. And then we've got more deals on Amazon Fire tablets, Razer peripherals, and more in the links of the description. Now let's talk about Qualcomm. It's, it's interesting. I mean, the company has really focused more on their premium mid-range lately instead of their flagship products. And there must be a reason for it. Qualcomm has been very aggressive with their updates as of late, and now we have a new 7 Series SoC. This is the new Snapdragon 750G. It's an eight nanometer processor, which uh, uses the Cairo 570 core CPU that promises a 20% boost in performance, and the new Adreno 619 GPU, which offers 10% boost in graphics. We wonder compared to what? This new processor supports both millimeter wave and sub six 5G with the X52 modem, and it comes with the Snapdragon Elite gaming features bundled. It supports things like 4K HDR video, 192 megapixel images, slow-mo at 720p at 240 frames per second, 120 hertz full HD plus displays, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1, and more peak clock speeds of 2.2 gigahertz. It'll be available end of this year, and actually it'll start powering one of Xiaomi's offerings, so stay tuned for that. Now for the gamers in the audience, let's talk Microsoft and the recent moves the company's been making, which, I don't know, I, I, I'm actually enticed. Microsoft just made a big move as they just acquired ZeniMax Media. If you don't know what the company is, they're the owners of Bethesda, which should ring a bell. I mean, they're also the parent company of gaming development studios like Tango Gameworks, Alpha Dog, and more. According to Bloomberg, Microsoft spent around $7.5 billion in the deal, which is pretty much their biggest video game purchase ever. They released a statement where they said that they'll be adding Bethesda Bethesda's iconic franchise to the Xbox Game Pass, and they're most excited to see the roadmap with future games. Bethesda owns some of the biggest titles in the industry like Fallout, the reboot to the Doom titles, Wolfenstein, The Elder Scrolls, and more. Now, they haven't made any announcements as to any new originals or how they plan to distribute them, but it looks like it's a move to compete against Sony, which always has the upper hand when it comes to exclusive titles, even though the commitments with the PlayStation will continue according to what we hear. And to be honest, I probably am the happiest because Wolfenstein is probably one of my favorite games of all time, so I can't wait for that to reach the Xbox Pass and you know, let's see what else we're getting. Now, yes, with the whole approach to Techtober, yes, we are getting closer to an iPhone launch and you'd assume that everywhere people are hyped, but it doesn't seem that every single partner is. AT&T has just come out with a report that says that they're not too hyped about it. According to the company's CEO of communications, he claims that he does believe that you will see many of the current iPhone subscribers upgrade their device, but he wouldn't forecast that it's going to be a massive event. But of course, he didn't really call it a non-event either. He thinks that based on the current pressures of the economy, people will make a calculated decision when it comes to buying new phones, and AT&T is going to be there to offer the these Apple devices regardless. Basically, what he's trying to say is that with 5G and the added prices, he doesn't think people will flock to stores and get the new iPhones like it happened in prior years. 
due to the economy, but hey, with Apple, you really never know. What do you guys think will happen? I mean, I do believe that this is the reason why yesterday we covered how the iPhone mini might actually take over the news. We'll see. Now, yesterday we got the news officially that OnePlus is gonna show us their new OnePlus 8T on October 14th, but is it just me or did we not get the same amount of hype that OnePlus provided with the Nord, which was not a flagship. Now we got some official statements from Pete Lau when it comes to this phone's display. According to Pete himself, this phone will pack a 6.55 inch display running at 120 hertz. He also added that they'll be using a 2.5D flexible display for the first time with this phone. If you didn't know, the 2.5D flexible panel offers improved light permeability, reaching a maximum brightness of up to 1100 nits. The report also adds that this phone will bring a 91.9 screen to body ratio, the highest on any OnePlus phone. And finally, and moving away from the specifications, he claims that it will have the highest color accuracy possible across the screen. But enough with the promo. Let's move on to the leaked price tags, which we got yesterday on Twitter. According to the tipster, these prices are exclusive to Europe and they're pretty expensive. The entry level variant of the AT will cost 799 euros and the added RAM and storage will cost you 899. This is actually cheaper than what we currently have with the 8, but if you do remember, the 7T was 100 euros cheaper than the 7, so these leaks might not be too far off. He also claims that his source is very sure with the prices, so we pretty much should expect the same numbers in the United States, like $799 or $899, as OnePlus doesn't really change the prices depending on currencies. Too expensive? Good price? I mean, I think that if OnePlus can't really keep that product at the $699 price range, it's gonna be a tough and steep battle. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with the Google Pixel 5. We are close to the company's event and I think Google actually has caught up to the fact that they need to make phones that people want. And they showed us that with the Pixel 4a. Now it seems that they're gonna go pro. Let's keep on talking price leaks and this time it's actually positive. We've gotten several leaks about this phone, like the design and the specifications, but we hadn't gotten a leaked price tag ahead of the September 30th event. Now it's been listed on a European retailer, giving us more information on what to expect, colors and storage variants. First, we get some screenshots of the listing, but those aren't too trustworthy, so later we got a reliable tipster confirming what to expect. According to him, the Pixel 4a 5G will cost 499 euros, and it'll come in black and white variants. The Pixel 5 will cost 629 euros, and it will come in black and green variants. Unfortunately, no Panda this year. All the screenshots from the retailers go along with these price tags, so they're probably not too far off. And focusing on the Pixel 5, we're expecting this phone to bring a six inch OLED display running at 90 Hertz, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 765G, eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. And well, we also have dual cameras at the back with an ultra wide now being included instead of the telephoto. And it seems the 4A 5G will simply be a larger 4A with 5G and dual cameras. So yes, this is possibly what we're getting. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. I mean, Pixel 5 for 629. Obviously, it'll depend on what materials we get, et cetera, et cetera, but 629, that's crazy good. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. I think that if the materials are there, then sure, I want one. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social media so our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me want to get back to normal too. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.